The question can be solved from a mechanical point of view on, in this way. First of recalling Hooke's law and using the principle of superposition, we get the expressions for the direct strains epsilon 1 1, epsilon 2 2 and epsilon 3 3 and the shear strains epsilon 1 2, epsilon 2 3 and epsilon 3 1. Substituting on the previous equations that sigma 1 3, sigma 2 3 and sigma 3 3 are equal to zero, we get the following set of equations for epsilon 1 1, epsilon 2 2 and epsilon 1 2. Rearranging these equations in a matrix form, we get the following matrix. That shows that the strain matrix is equal to the compliance matrix times the stress matrix, and therefore that the stress matrix is equal to the inverse of the compliance matrix times the strain matrix, and therefore that the inverse of the compliance matrix is the elasticity tensor matrix D. Now we're going to explain the mathematical part. Knowing that the compliance tensor matrix is equal to the inverse of the elasticity tensor matrix, that the compliance tensor matrix for plain stress is the following. And showing mathematically that as C is equal to the inverse of D, D must be equal to the inverse of C. We can find D with the following formula and the following steps. We use this assumption for isotropic materials such as thin plates where all stresses act in the plane of the plate. So having used the principle of superposition and uh, from lecture notes, we can de derive the different equations for epsilon 1 1, epsilon 2 2, and epsilon 3 3. And given the plane strain, we have epsilon 1 3, epsilon 2 3, and epsilon 3 3 equal to 0. This gives us sigma 3 3 is equal to mu times sigma 1 1 plus sigma 2 2. Adding this one to the previous equations, we get the first equation which uh, relates epsilon 1 1 to sigma 1 1 and sigma 2 2 and the second equation giving us epsilon 2 2 in terms of eps uh, sigma 2 2 and sigma 1 1. Now multiplying the first equation by mu divided by 1 minus mu we get a third equation um, and adding together the second and the third equation we get epsilon 1 1 epsilon 2 2 in terms of only uh, sigma 2 2. Proceeding the same way now we can find um, epsilon 2 2 multiplying the whole second equation by mu divided by 1 minus mu we then get adding together the fourth equation and the first equation uh, epsilon 2 2 and epsilon 1 1 in terms of sigma 1 1 then this gives us two new sets of equations for sigma 1 1 and sigma 1 2. Adding all of these equations for sigma 1 1, sigma 1 2 and sigma 2 2, we get uh, the elasticity tensors matrix. And 
uh, that's basically what we're looking for here, which is actually the inverse of the compliance tensors matrix. So when is it appropriate to use uh, the assumptions made to in the question 2b? So basically when the dimension of the structures are in one direction, uh, it's very large uh, in comparison to the dimensions of the structures in the other two dire directions. So we can use this in uh, retaining walls, F dam, and uh, this is also because the, the material we are analyzing here is uh, isotropic. Basically, uh, the method that uh, we just saw was the mechanical approach, and now we're going to look for the uh, Gauss-Jordan uh, approach, which is basically a mathematical method. So basically, here, uh, writing uh, two matrices uh, for the Gauss-Jordan approach, we write on the right-hand side the unit matrix, and on the left-hand side, uh, the compliancy tensors matrix in order to get uh, the same way the elasticity tensors matrix. So basically for the first step we'll multiply the first row by mu divided by 1 minus nu uh, and we'll add it to the second row in order to find a new second row which will be much simpler to analyze. The second step is here to add uh, the new f the, the first row to uh, the new second row multiplied by mu times 1 minus nu, uh, the whole thing divided by 1 minus 2 nu. And basically this will give us two new rows, uh, first and second rows. So in this case, uh, that's the last step to find the elasticity stensors matrix. We'll divide uh, the first row by 1 minus nu. We'll multiply the second row by 1 minus nu, the whole thing divided by 1 minus 2 nu. And we'll finally divide the last row by 2. So this will give us a uni unit matrix on the left hand side and a new matrix on the right hand side, which actually corresponds to the elasticity stensors matrix. We started off by stating plane strain, epsilon 1, 3, epsilon 2, 3, and epsilon 3, 3 are equal to 0. By constitutive relations, epsilon 1, 1 is equal to 1 over E, sigma 1, 1 minus mu, sigma 2, 2 plus sigma 3, 3. We call it equation 1. Epsilon 2, 2 equals to 1 over E, sigma 2, 2 minus mu, sigma 1, 1 plus sigma 3, 3. We call it equation 2. Sig epsilon 3, 3 equals to, to 0. Then we could get sigma 3, 3 equals to mu. Sigma 2, 2 plus sigma 1, 1. We call it equation 3. Then we can get the shear strain. Then we could get sigma 1, 3 equals to sigma 2, 3 at is equal to 0. Substitute in equation number 3 into 1 and 2. Then we could get epsilon 1, 1. We call it equation number 4. Epsilon 2, 2. We call it equation number 5. 2 epsilon 1, 2 equals to gamma 1, 2. We call it equation number 6. Then we partially differentiate number 4, which is epsilon 1, 1 with respect to x2 twice. We could get epsilon 1, 1, 2, 2 equals to 1 over e times 1 minus mu square times sigma 1, 1, 2, 2 minus 1 plus mu times mu times sigma 2, 2, 2, 2. Then we partially differentiate 
equation number five, which is epsilon two two with with respect to x one twice. Then we could get epsilon two two comma one one equals to one over e times one minus mu square times sigma two two comma one one minus one plus mu times mu times sigma one one comma one one. Then we could use the compatibility of strains, which is epsilon one one comma two two plus epsilon two two comma one one equals to two epsilon one two comma one two. Then we could use the equations above to get one plus mu over e times one minus mu times sigma one one comma two two plus one minus mu sigma two two comma one one. Minus mu times sigma two two comma two two minus mu times sigma one one comma one one equals to two sigma one two comma one two times one plus mu over e. Simplified it, we've got equation number seven. As there is no body force on elastic solid, then we could use equilibrium equations. On plane x one, we could get sigma one one comma one. Plus sigma one two comma two equals to zero. Differentiate with respect to x one, we could then get sigma one one comma one one equals to minus sigma one two comma two one. We call it equation number eight. On plane x two, we could get sigma two one comma one plus sigma two two comma two equals to zero. We differentiate it with respect to x two. We could then get sigma one two comma one two equals to minus sigma two two comma two two, and we call it equation number nine. As sigma one two comma two one is equal to sigma one two comma one two, then and from eight and nine we could get two sigma one two comma one two. Equals to minus sigma one one comma one one minus sigma two two comma two two. We call it equation number ten. Substitute number ten to number seven. We could get one minus mu times sigma one one comma two two plus sigma two two comma one one minus mu times sigma one one comma one one minus mu sigma two two comma two two minus sigma one one comma one one. Minus sigma two two comma two two equals to zero. Factorize it and simplify it. We could get sigma one one comma two two plus sigma two two comma one one plus sigma one one comma one one plus sigma two two comma two two equals to zero. We call it equation number eleven. Define two D Laplacian operator del square. Del square then equals to Partial differentiate d over d a square over d x one square plus partial differentiate d square over d x two square. Then eleven becomes del square times sigma one one plus sigma two two equals to zero. We then define every stress function. Sigma one one is equal to phi comma two two. Sigma two two equals to phi comma one one. Sigma one two equals to minus phi comma one two. By eleven, we could get phi comma one 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 plus two phi comma one one two two plus phi comma two 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 equals to zero. Defined by harmonic operator del to the four, and it is equal to del square to the square. Then we could get del to the four times. Phi equals to zero.